The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We'll start the day with the DAX like we usually do. As you can see, it's been in a little bit of a down trend. We're now testing those old lows. It looks like it's going to go through it. Remember, this is a, um, a Friday in a down week, which is not a good thing. Uh, we've been down every day this week, and that usually tells us that we're probably headed lower. Remember, we have this uh, solar eclipse and new moon coming in on the 15th. We topped on the new moon. Up, oh, right, let's try that again, Larry. Uh, we topped on the full moon and lunar eclipse because there's a high probability we're going to bottom on the uh, solar eclipse and new moon on the 15th of February. So we'll uh, we'll watch that one uh, very very closely. Now the next one we want to take a look at here is the the FTSE. If you remember when we got up to that 7800 uh, on the daily chart we had a perfect a b c d uh, exactly at that level and it stayed there for a whole week folks uh well actually for four days and it was really uh, you know really a sign that there was going to have some type of correction and now we're back below the uh 61 percent retracement we're right near the a b c d pattern so this is due for a counter trend rally here without uh too much trouble, but gosh, you never know. Look what's happening to these Treasury bonds and Treasury notes. I mean, we've looked at these and showed you that the long-term targets are, you know, sharply lower. Interest rates are going higher. If you're interested in, you know, refinancing your house, I uh, highly recommend you do it now. Uh, we've got the 10-year is now at 2.8%. Uh, we started the week at 2.6%. If you remember Mr. Z here in the room at TFNN, uh, posted that chart for us early in the week where the notes were breaking down badly, signaling that these rates wanted to go higher. This is one of the strongest weeks for rising interest rates that we've seen, you know, in a very, very long time. Folks, one of the one of the fun things of doing a radio show like this, it takes me about an hour and a half to get ready for it, you know, trying to make things a little different and interesting for you. But the emails and a few phone calls that I get, mostly emails, uh, from people that I have not heard from in 40 years. I received a really uh, nice email from somebody from the old Conti Commodity Days in Chicago uh, going back to 1978. And uh, it was it was really, uh, really interesting. And the question that uh, he had for me was, uh, you know, the longer term projections, you know, for some of these things. He thought where he could possibly buy the QQQ for a long-term position. And believe me, long-term positions are really difficult for me because I, I focus on the amount of money that I want to risk. And so I, if I were to look at this, going back to the October lows, which were very significant, as you remember, uh, the 61% retracement on the QQQs will come down here another 10% from where we're trading right now. So that would take us down to about the 153 level. Now, when we get to that level, I'd certainly like to see what the pattern looks like. But uh, for really long-term stuff like that, it's uh, it's really hard to, uh, especially when the market's been basically vertical for uh, you know two years. So it's going to be a little difficult to try to find a low-risk entry. But my focus is not on uh, how much uh, you're going to make; it's uh, how much you're going to risk and. That's the one thing that I uh, really type to take, you know, try to take a look at. If we look at this uh, Netflix, that was another one that he asked about, and we'll put this up so you can see it. Um, Netflix is, you know, is already uh, topped. It topped on Monday, just like the rest of the markets. Uh, it has a little bit of a down move. You see, we've got this huge gap down here. That's, uh, you know, that's a uh, 40 bucks from where we are right now. But here again, what I would be looking for is a 61% retracement either around that 214 level, which is the old highs from back in October, or a potential 61% retracement down around the 197 level in, in Netflix. But as we get closer to it, see, there's no pattern or anything here 
to even uh, tell you what your risk is going to be on this. And if you focus on how much money you're going to lose as opposed to how much money you're going to win, you're going to be far, far better off. That's uh, that's the main thing. And speaking of uh, winning and losing, I, I was noticing that the uh, Super Bowl, well, everybody knows the Super Bowl is Sunday, but the proposition bets for the Super Bowl, these are bets that are not related to the outcome of the game, usually it's whether the team gets a safety, who's going to score first, who makes the first first uh, first down, who catches the first pass, who gets the first sack, who gets the safety. There are over 300 of those proposition bets, and uh, it's it's really uh, insanity. My favorite bet, if I were to do it, and I don't, would be to bet on a safety. In other words, that the Philadelphia Eagles would score a safety. In other words, they have to score two points, which is uh, very very difficult to do. And the odds on that are about 20 to 1. So you got a 20 to 1 payoff for a $10 bet. That's not so bad. But uh, on the outcome of the game, I, you know, may the force be with them. I hope it'll be a good game, but we'll see uh, what happens. But uh, the betting on it is just absolutely uh, unbelievable. But remember, the reason why I'm bringing this up, and there's a, a history or a method in my madness here. The reason why I bring this up is when we are doing speculation, whether it's gold or silver or anything else, this is not gambling, folks. Gambling is based on an event that is predicated by something happening that starts something that goes to the end. It's the flip of the coin, the blow of the whistle, the turn of the the roll the roll of the dice, the spin of the wheel, the toss of the ball, whatever whatever it happens to be. You know, you, you're going to have to say, uh, this is how much I'm going to risk when I'm getting ready to do this. And you can get in and out of a trade in a matter of seconds. So we know exactly where we stand. In fact, in trading, the only thing we can control is the risk. It's not how much profit we're going to make. We don't know what's going to happen. No one knows that except God, and she doesn't trade anymore. So remember that gambling has nothing to do with, you know, intelligent risk speculation is how Jesse Livermore uh, explained what we do. So that's really what you're trying to do. You're trying to focus on how much risk you're working on, and that's, uh, you know, that's the main thing that you want to uh, you want to do. Remember that the first mistake teaches, the second mistake kills. So make sure that when you make the first mistake, you know, whether it's being on the wrong side of the market or answering a margin call, you don't make that second mistake. And answering a margin call is answering the second mistake. You certainly don't want to uh, do that. Yes, Mr. Z, it really looks like the gold is headed lower. That was my next topic of discussion. Uh, we had a beautiful Gartley in the gold last night. I'll bring this up. We, were, we sent a video on this. Uh, last night for the 24-7 folks, and you'll notice here that uh, we hit that perfect ABCD level up around that 1353 level. Uh, we're breaking hard now. The ABCD structure on this, as Mr. Z has pointed out, takes us to 1320. Uh, we're not very far away from it, a little bit more of what we're doing right now, and we would be there, and we're Friday and this is going to be a down week, so it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what happens. But the problem with the gold market, and this is two things that we want to measure. I'm not going to get it all done on this uh, segment here because we've got to pay a few bills for uh, TFNN. But one of the main things that we were looking at, of course, was the fact that the silver market was acting very poorly. Notice how it went exactly to the 786, and we will finish this when we get back from our break, 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Eddie Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking about the gold and silver. And uh, one of the things that we talked about, of course, was the silver, you know, going up to the 78% level last week. And then it's, you know, breaking below the $17 level quite a bit right now per ounce. And so we're looking for it to get uh, lower. But the fact that this gold is coming off so quickly is a very important uh, thing, especially on a Friday. Now, another thing that we, that we looked at that was very, very important that we got from one of our folks up in uh, one of our favorite people up in the old, uh, the old mountain. What are those names of that mountain? Uh, I can't remember the names of the mountains in Utah. Doug, Wasatch. The Wasatch Mountains, and I uh, wanted to show you the uh, chart that uh, shows the relationship here between the uh, the gold and the euros, where the euros were non-conforming. You can see the euros priced in gold, uh, gold priced in euros on the bottom. That's a really nice one three five pattern that we have there. We have the lower tops. You know, that de that determines a trend. When you have lower tops and lower bottoms, you're in a downtrend. You can see the gold. Uh, you know, rallied up and took out those old highs, but we certainly did not do that, you know, in the uh, in the euros. That means half the world, you know, Europe and uh, the other part of the world is not uh, participating in this gold rally at all. So that was one of the real key levels to look at when gold was making that double top at 1368. Now, that could have been wrong, and, that, you know, you're wrong a lot doing these things, but the thing is, you got to get to a point where you decide whether this is where you want to be. And with the fact that silver was not making new highs, uh, and we saw this relationship between gold and euro, it was giving you a pretty good idea that something was not uh, the way it should be. And then when we see this Gartley last night at that 1353 level, that really was sort of a confirmation of what was happening. But we don't know for sure. Uh, if that's going to continue or not, but right now it looks like gold is heading towards that 1320 uh, level. I will look at the dollar in just a second, but if we take a look here at the Japanese yen, we've had a question uh, about the Japanese yen from uh, our good friend in Atlanta. We want to. This is one of the things that I focused on in the newsletter this past week was the fact that we were making our third test in the um, euro uh, in the, the dollar yen. Uh, down at that level of the uh, one uh, that 107 and change level, folks. We're now trading at 110 and a half, 
you know, that's a three-handle run this week. That's the three large, 3000 bucks in one week. That tells us that bottom is really important, and that tells us that this is probably going to go up to their 112.50 level as a minimum. That would be a 61% retracement of this last move. So it's important to, uh, to keep in mind that uh, these patterns don't work all the time, but uh, you'll be able to uh, take a look at it here. I don't know why you have to be sorry, Ruby. We're going to do the dollar index right now because this is one that uh, we've talked about quite a bit, and it's still holding really nicely uh, above the 88 level. As you can see here on the weekly chart, that's the 61% retracement. That, equi that equates to that 125 in the um, euro and we tested 125 again, and it gave it up again today. And at 125 today, it was making a 61, excuse me, a 78% retracement of the previous high at 125.60. So this tells us that the dollar index is holding up rel relatively well at this point. But this is still early. You know, this is, uh, you know, we're only this the first week of the month, and usually around January is when these uh, things have a tendency to make big changes. So we are looking at some real interesting things, uh, you know, on the dollar and the euro and stuff. But the one that was the most interesting this week, of course, was the, uh, the British pound. We had been watching this for quite some time, and uh, we had a tremendously uh, beautiful pattern here in the British pound that we talked about uh, on Monday. And uh, you'll notice here that we got all the way down to 139 and change, and then we rallied up to a 78% a retracement, and then it's backed off from that level, telling us that this high that we made last week at that 173.75 level is, uh, you know, certainly uh, very, very important. Now, uh, we're going to talk just a little bit here about the stock market because uh, we're having a, uh, you know, a down day. To, well, actually, it's a down day, but, you know, bouncing back a little bit. But, folks, this market is not acting very nicely given the fact that we're looking at a, uh, a move in the uh, – excuse me one second – with very, very friendly news with this job report of 200,000, they were expecting somewhere between 160 and 180. We got a whole lot bigger number than that, and the market has not reacted very much. Now, we're still trading within a hair's breadth of that 61% retracement of the low two weeks ago. That comes in at uh, 2806. In the S&P, we're trading at uh, 2804 right now. Uh, we were as low as uh, 2797. So uh, that's uh, it, this market looks like it wants to go lower, folks. Uh, I believe I have the chart for that showing that we're going to go at least 40 handles lower. I don't think it's going to be today, but uh, we've got a situation that says that it should go a, a great deal uh, lower, and hopefully we can find this chart. And if I can't, I will post it just as soon as I can find it. And since I can't, give me a time here to... Uh, Get this up. Boy, this is frustrating when I can't. I do all these charts, and then when I get ready to look at them, uh, it just drives me nuts. So if you hold on here one second. And the reason why this chart is so important, folks, it's going to take me just a second to finish it because I have to draw this big ABCD in because that's what happened last night, and that tells us what the uh, – uh, we're looking at 27.67, which is the 61% uh, – boy, Larry – Let's try it again. Judge's ruling. It's 78% level comes in at 2767. The reason why this is important, because yesterday, you know, when we hit that 61% retracement, we were on the air at the opening. We rallied, uh, we rallied uh, 25 handles all the way up to uh, uh, 2836 uh, and a half. That was the exact 38% retracement from the high on the 28th. That ABCD pattern takes us down to 27.67. I don't believe that'll be hit today, but I believe that it'll be hit sometime, uh, you know, early in the week. And we're only 30 handles, well, yeah, about 35 handles away, so we could do it today, but I really don't think it. I think that'll happen. Now, I remember when we had this first drop in the Dow of 350 points, I mentioned that expect the next big Dow drop to be over 500. You take 36, multiply it times 1.618, that's going to get you down to 550 points uh, on the Dow someday. In other words, in one day, we should see that. This thing is held up 
with these numbers, you know, ever since the S&P start trading. But, you know, what you have to do is you don't know when they're going to happen. You just say what the, the value should be when that does occur. We saw this all during 2008 and 2009 on the way down, and we'll probably see it here. So uh, we don't know where the bottom is here. But when we get to this 2767, that's going to be the first major ABCD move, uh, I believe, in the whole year. Because we would go from, yeah, it would be 100 points, and we haven't had a 100-point drop uh, in the S&P in well over a year, maybe maybe even longer, maybe even two years. But anyway, that's what we're looking for is 2767 in the S&P. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for some marijuana. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, folks, I got a text message from all the executives at uh, TFNN wondering why I was talking about marijuana. Well, I'm just trying to help the folks here at TFNN that listen to our program, and one of our listeners was asking about a stock, GWPH. It's a stock about cannabis or whatever it's called, marijuana. I guess that stands for grass weed for people's high, but I don't know if that's the case or not. But it trades nicely. You can see, I don't know anything about the volume, 
Uh, all I did on this was just put in the standard cycle in there, which is basically 195 or 200 days. And you'll notice that that comes in around March 19th. Uh, the 61% retracement there, you'll notice, comes in at around 113. That's about 10% lower. Uh, that's very similar to what we're looking at in Netflix and the QQQ. And then there's also a 20-man line that comes in at the 103 level. Uh, at the 78% level. So that's what I would be guessing it might be at at that time. I'm going to save this and uh, take a look at it back in, Mar in March when we get to that level. I, I didn't even know that they traded this, folks. I had no idea that uh, the stock exchange, uh, well, <laughs> I had no idea that they were doing this, so uh, why I should be surprised, I don't know. Anyway, uh, that's what it looks like for this stock. It looks no different than any other stock, whether it's uh, Amazon or any of the others, but, you know, who knows. It's, uh, well, more power to people any way they like to do it. All right, I have another question about one other currency that we want to talk about, uh, folks, and that is the... Uh, Hold on, let me find it here if I can. Oh dear, where is it? We covered the Japanese yen. Oh no, I've lost the Australian dollar. Shut the front door and raise the rent. That doesn't make me happy. Let's move on to Bitcoin because as you remember, we were looking for Bitcoin to break the uh, 6,000 or the 8,000 level. We had the big ABC it's down there in that area. Let's just, there's two ways I want you to look at this, folks. This, oh shucks, hold on. Did something wrong. Give me one second here to get this ready. There we go. Here's the one that we get from our friend across the pond. And now we're going to the shows below 8,000 is what we were looking for. And now we want to look at one from our good friend, uh, Kerry Szymanski, who is a uh, good friend of ours, happens to be a resident here of Tucson, who worked with me for uh, quite a few years. And we're still working together as friends. But uh, he's brought his chart up. Uh, showing the Bitcoin index that they're looking at. And we'll put this up and you'll see that we are down in the zone where we're making this big ABCD correction. We're just about at the 38% correction now from the, the big low that we had back here. So the lower end of this comes in at around 74.75. And I believe that is the low that we've hit so far this morning. So kind of keep an eye on that because uh, if it uh, doesn't hold this level, you know, you're going to be uh, looking at something that is going to be uh, quite a bit uh, lower in Bitcoin. This might be the end of Bitcoin. I know many people think that it's going to be a situation where it's, is it trading at 8661 now? It's rallied 1,000 points? Wow, that's pretty good. So it hit that number pretty much spot on. Well, we'll see. Wow. Well, maybe this stuff works as technical analysis. Heck, who knows? Might even be the, uh, might even work sometime. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, someone's asked a question about the, the wheat. Uh, we talked about that yesterday uh, with that eclipse that we had here, uh, the lunar eclipse and full moon. Uh, we've now come down almost 17 cents. Uh, which is that harmonic number in wheat. So keep an eye on wheat. We should hold this uh, uh, 344 level in the wheat because it's going to be real interesting to see if it can hold this level. The grains overall look relatively good. Uh, they've held up relatively well, have a little bit of a sell-off today, but they are holding up uh, you know, pretty nicely uh, from what I've seen. The one thing I, I, we had, of course, we had Stan Harley on the other day talking about this big high that's come in pretty much we were looking at. But you remember on Monday, uh, Mr. Z in the room posted this chart here. And we'll bring this up to let you folks know it. This is one of the advantage of B in the Tiger uh, tiger Den, uh, which if you want to get into that, all you have to do is go to www.tfnn and it shows you how to come into the Tiger Den. They usually have somewhere between 60 and 80 traders in there. And folks, there's some really smart people in that den, let me tell you. They really are. Uh, many of them have been there for a very long time and they share a lot of great information. And, you know, like everything, sometimes they're wrong, but uh, more often than not, they're really close. And the one thing they do is they always show you what the risk is, you know, when they're putting on a trade. So uh, remember that, that it's all about risk control. It's not about how much money you make, it's how little you lose. And that's the main thing. I, w I wanted to bring this to your attention here uh, about I'm working with someone. Um, 
Oh, uh, if you go to the, the TFNN storage page, you'll be able to get a link into the uh, into the Tiger Den, and then you'll be able to see it. I'm working with a, a young man from uh, way, way far away in Asia, and uh, he has he's very young. He's only in his but uh, he's way below 40. But he, in the the past four years, he's done uh, thousands of trades. But his average trade is, is comes out to about a sixty dollar loss. So he's lost you know quite a bit of money. But he's his his losses are so small. And the problem that he's having, and he understands, you know the. Uh, the, the mechanics of the market, the problem that he's having is that he doesn't have the confidence to, to risk a little bit more money because if he would risk just a, you know, a few hundred dollars on a trade as opposed to $60 on a trade, I don't know anything that you can trade that you can only risk $60 on. I, I don't know anything like that. I, I think the minimum you can risk on anything is around 200 and I, I think 300 is more of a is it more of an adequate adequate stop? Because first of all, you can't follow the markets, you know, minute by minute. You know, trading one minute chart that'll drive you absolutely crazy. You'll understand more about how markets run, but if you try trading it, you know, that's a that's a recipe for disaster because your your spread on a one or or even two minute chart is going to be you know really tight. So your profit objective is going to be a lot different. So you know, learn from those shorter term charts, but you know, trade a minimum, you know, don't go anything below 15 minutes, I would believe, for two reasons. One, if you trade under 15 minutes, you're going to be watching the monitor all day long. And folks, that's not fun. You know, to me, that's that's really pain. I, you know, those of you that have been here to Tucson to visit me, you know, I don't spend a lot of time in front of the computer. I, I leave it on and I have my limit minders on to tell me when the, the prices are hit or not hit and, you know, whether an alert goes off or not. And that sometimes my, my order will flash, but that that it that it's filled or, or something. But, you know, to watch the monitor, the monitor's not your friend. Mark Douglas has always said that it's like a mirror that reflects all of the you know inadequacies and, and errors in your in your psychic and that's really what it is because if you're long a stock you focus on the upticks if you're short a stock you're focused on the downsticks and if you don't look at it you're at ease because the market doesn't care whether you're looking or not it really doesn't you know, uh, that's the main thing. You know, we've been short gold and we've been short the euro. I have no idea, you know, where these are. But we had a perfect Gartley in the euro up there last night at the 125 level. It went 20 pips beyond that. And you know, now it's broken, you know, 70 pips in our favor. But, you know, who cares? Nobody's watching it but you. You know, no one cares. Except you. 877-927-6648. <laughs> Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade Thinker Swim is now at 11 a.m. followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. 
See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, folks, I posted the chart of the euro versus the, uh, the gold like we've um, uh, seen before. This is also from uh, Salt Lake City, and uh, it really shows that there was something happening, and that's pretty much what's happened this week. The next chart I wanted to bring to your attention here is the crude oil. Oh, I hope that worked. I hope that crude oil posted. But we had a really nice 78% uh, level up there at that 66 level. We've already broken 75 pips. And um, so it's uh, I, if you were doing this trade, and I know some of you were, uh, you certainly want to put your stop at the break-even point right now because you don't want to give up a $700 profit, you know, e even though you might have to to try to get more, but you don't want it to go to a loss. Because if you're risking, say, 60 pips, and now you've made 70, now you're risking 130, and that's not smart to put the stop above that old high because you would certainly be wrong if it got back to your level. That That's at least, you know, the, the 10 cent version of risk control uh, that we're looking at. By the way, I've got some good news for you folks. Uh, on uh, next, uh, on the uh, uh, 8th, on Thursday, uh, we're going to have our good friend um, Bill Meridian on from um, Cycles Research in Vienna, Austria, talking about some of these markets, and he'll have something special for us. So, so that'll be an interesting one, you know, to, uh, to, to watch, too, as we're looking at. The bonds continue uh, to work lower, folks. I don't see any hope in these bonds. We've been, um, we've, we've been watching these for a long time, and, uh, you know, these notes look like they're going to go a great deal lower. Just looking at this longer-term chart, uh, in the uh, notes and bonds, uh, you know, ever since we made that right shoulder up there at 127, which was more than five handles ago, uh, that was a, you know, just almost a perfect 50% uh, retracement. It was 4.46. It was halfway between 50% and 382. Had a beautiful ABCD pattern there. That's when we were trading at 154 you know, in the bonds, and now the bonds are considerably lower than that. They're down around 145. So uh, the, this is a beautiful head and shoulders pattern in the weekly chart. I mean, this is a textbook pattern because you have the distance between the left shoulder and the head, and the head and the right shoulder are equal. The ratio of the head to the shoulder on the right comes in at a perfect fib number. And if you look at that that dark line there that goes way back into 2013, that's a 20 min line that acts like a fulcrum, you know, pushing the prices lower. And, you know, we're looking at another six handles lower in the, uh, in the, the notes and bonds, bef especially in the notes. I'm not sure about the bonds. I'd have to do that one separately. And that's what I'll do this weekend, uh, you know, with the newsletter to, to check and see what we're looking at for the next support. But, you know, interest rates are going higher. So if you have to, uh, you know, refinance something now is the well, it was better to do it a few weeks ago. But rates are going higher, so you want to get, you know, get your rates in low. They're still relatively low uh, on a uh, on a historical basis, but they are going to go higher. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to get back to that uh, 
you know, 4% level. Nobody ever believes that could happen, but don't forget this thing went up for 32 years of lower rates, you know, starting in 82. So uh, we topped several years ago. So it looks like, uh, you know, we are going a little bit lower. So <laughs> uh, Terry's making a joke about the boat ride because uh, when the bonds uh, were up there, that 170 level, I told uh, uh, Tom that I didn't think they'd get any higher. Uh, and they changed the contract specification, and th that, that one month did go higher, but they did top uh, a year and a half ago, and I still think they're going to go uh, a great deal lower here. And I, I don't believe we'll ever see rates uh, again, like we just saw, where zero rates. I mean, that, that was insanity. I mean, you got, you know, third world countries pretty much were, were yielding uh, less on their uh, on their bonds and stuff than we were here in the United States with AAA. I mean, that makes no sense at all. But, you know, these markets get uh, way out of uh, whack sometimes because of the emotionalism involved in the market. So, that's it. And we have the same thing possibly happening in the stock market. Maybe this thing has made, you know, some type of a bubble uh, of some uh, imagination. I don't know. Someone's asked a question about the key level in the, uh, in the stock market, folks. Uh, the key level in that stock market from our perspective was that 28, uh, uh, tw 12 level. That was the 61% retracement. We're now 10 handles below that. And uh, it's a Friday and it's in a down week. So, if it closes higher, I don't think it's going to close higher by very much. And so I would be looking at this from a standpoint of watch what the rallies have done. You know, all of the rallies that we've had in the S&P this week, and, and believe me, we've had some nice ones. We had a nice rally yesterday, but it gave up the ghost. But the rallies have been around 20 points or so. That's a harmonic number in the S&P is 5.5. So that's basically four harmonic numbers. And uh, watch for a 382 retracement of the, of the retracements. That's what we had yesterday. Once we exceed a 382 retracement, then you could look at something bigger. But until that happens, you know, stick with, uh, you know, what you're looking at. Uh, someone's asked a question about this crude oil. We're, we're now, we just broke $65 a barrel in crude. The 61% retracement on this comes in just a little bit lower here at 6480. Uh, that's that old congestion area from February 1st. But uh, here again, uh, you come down here very strong. You broke over a dollar a barrel here in just the you know the last uh, hour and a half. So that tells you there's a lot of selling. We haven't seen this much selling uh, in the crude uh, well over three weeks. So this could be a very very interesting uh, spot here uh, in crude oil if it's going to try to hold. But frankly, it doesn't look like it because of the hard down that we're having today. Uh, but, you know, that remains to be seen. But watch this level around 64.50. That's about 30 cents from where we are right now. Going below that is going to tell us that we're going to be looking at something, you know, very, very significant, you know, uh, on the downside. So that's uh, what it looks like here. Let me double check. They're asking me a question. Um, yeah, crude oil did sell off $3, but it did it over a very uh, – uh, Normal time period. This I'm telling you that we just broken two dollars in a matter of hours. Yes, last week it took three or four days to do that. So there's a totally different because there was some distribution going on over there. Here it looks like there's more panic selling coming in. That hey, that's my opinion of the market, and believe me, you know my opinion's wrong a lot. You know the just just keep that in mind. But we are coming down really fast. One of the main danger signals of pattern recognition, folks are these wide-ranging bars. The second one are the gaps, which you see. Those are telling you that there's something unknown that is out there, either heavy selling, heavy buying, you know, uh, you know, potential, some type of a potential uh, disaster or something. I don't know, but we'll wait and see. Uh, the sell, from our standpoint, was the um, uh, look at looking at that crude oil. The 78% the, uh, level came in at 65.90. I believe the high was uh, 66.30, so it was within the parameters of risk, which we usually risk around 60 to 80 cents, which is six to eight hundred dollars in the crude because it it swings a lot. Anytime you get a market that can move twelve hundred dollars, you got to figure of half of that. You got to be able to use as a parameter for risk control, and that's what we really try to uh, look. Uh, someone's asked, can you find your Yen chart at the break. I, uh, I I have it. I put that yen chart up. I'll put it up again for you, but uh, I have it right here. 
I, it's not updated. I, I, at the break, I will update. Wow, it's just the break already. Boy, when you're having fun, it really goes quick. I'll post that. I'll post that yen chart at the break. You don't buy into that nonsense, do you? You know, you can't time the markets. I didn't. And in 2006, I set out on a mission to do just that. I began by surrounding myself with the greats like Tom O'Brien, Larry Pesavento, David White, and Basil Chapman. I read countless books and even looked to the moon and planets for answers. Now, we both know that trading is 80% mental. So I learned the exact tools that Tony Robbins uses to overcome fear. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability. And last March, the folks at Timers Digest began tracking my newsletter signals which through January 18, 2018 placed me as the number one gold timer for that exact time frame. Now I can't officially be recognized until Timers Digest has a full year of signals but clearly I've learned how to time the markets and I'd like to teach you how to do that as well. Subscribers to Mastering Probability gain access to my live and archive workshops where I show you the exact same patterns that earn me this number one ranking. If you're looking for great market calls and an education sign up for Mastering Probability today at TFNN.com. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining Mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bag and sign up for the Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're going to take a look at this Japanese yen chart uh, going back a little over a year. You notice those dark black lines there? Those are just equal moves. We just had one completing down there, just right at that 107 and change level. That's why I believe we're having this strong rally. That was basically a 100-day cycle that has worked three times in a row. That's usually all you get with uh, cycles like this because then they start to expand and contract. But with the strong move that we've had, uh, today, that reconfirms that this bottom is in. We've rallied uh, over $3,000 this week uh, in the uh, yen dollar, and so we're expecting it to get up around the 112 and change level before it runs into any really significant uh, resistance. If you'll notice the low that we made back in September, which was the last cycle low, it never really backed off very much from the move from, uh, you know, 107 all the way up to 113, we could see this thing possibly go all the way back up again. We don't know. This would mean that the U.S. dollar would be weakening, and excuse me, strengthening, and that would surprise uh, a whole lot of people because it looks like the euro has, uh, you know, potentially broken out, but it really hasn't when you look at the dollar index because the dollar index 
is still holding above 88. As long as it's doing that, that's the 61% retracement on the um, you know long-term chart, uh, weekly chart. So got to pay really close attention to those. So that's the main thing. Everybody enjoy the Super Bowl if you watch it. If you don't watch it, still enjoy your weekend. And I want to thank everybody for uh, putting up with me for the whole week and live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. And I want to talk a little bit about psychology next week. I'm hoping to have a special guest on, uh, Mark Douglas's wife, who's carried on his torch. Hopefully we'll have Paula on to give us uh, some ideas of what she's doing, you know, with uh, trading in the zone uh, since Mark passed away. Anyway, let's uh, keep looking at these markets and live every day in an attitude of gratitude. folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks!